hey guys what's up so it is 20th november 2017 and let's get discuss the mcqs the treaty of uh, rarotonga central asia treaty of bangkok southeast asia and treaty on a nuclear weapon free zone south pacific so which of the following are correctly matched so answer is b is the two only the treaty of rarotonga is in south pacific the treaty of bangkok is in southeast asia and the treaty on a nuclear weapon free zone is in central asia the per capita consumption of plastics in india is very low as compared to the world average the per capita consumption of plastics is lower in eastern india than the national average so answer here is both these statements are correct so in india is only 10 kg as compared to 32 kg but in eastern india it is further lower as 5 kg only question number 3 former prime minister manmohan singh will be the recipient of this year's indira gandhi prize for peace disarmament and development the award is given annually to individuals and not to organization answer is a one only so it is also given to organization like isro etc and it is given out annually to individuals and organizations in recognition of creative effort towards promoting international peace etc and the previous recipients also include the soviet leader mikhail gorbachev question number 4 which among the following decisions are decisions are covered under the national vector bond disease control program so here answer is d all of the above uh, sorry 1 2 3 3 and the fourth disease that is not covered that is the rabies is not covered here so directorate of national vector bond disease control program is a central nodal agency for the prevention and control of vector bond disease it includes malaria dengue filariasis kalazar japanese encephalitis and chikungunya and it is one of the technical department of directorate of national health service government of india Consider the following statements about the dengue epidemic in India. India is reporting more dengue cases every passing year from the past few years, and it itself is becoming more endemic in India. And dengue epidemic follows a natural cycle. So answer is D, all of the above. So India is getting better each year at reporting dengue, leading to more cases, and it itself is becoming more endemic due to urbanization. And dengue epidemics follow the natural cycle as population immunity increases and decreases. when antibodies against one serotype of virus worsens the second infection instead of protecting against uh, okay worsens the second infection instead of protecting against it so this phenomenon is called as antibody dependent enhancement and it results in more dangerous illness called dengue hemorrhagic fever so answer is c both one and two so this antibody dependent enhancement leads to dengue hemorrhagic fever which among the following are the offenses under wildlife protection act of 1972 stealing power from overhead animal deaths that result from the erection of illegal electric fences so answer here is c both one and two so stealing power from overhead lines animal deaths that result from the erection of these fences are offenses under the wildlife protection act of 1972 question number 8 hunter syndrome is a disorder when the body cannot break down sugar that builds bones skin tendons and other tissues Hunter syndrome is caused by defective genes in DNA. So answer is C, both one and two. Okay, question number nine. Which among the following are the characteristics of persistent organic pollutants? So most POPs generated in one country can and do affect people and wildlife far from where they are used and released. That is correct. They persist for a very short period of time in the environment. Is wrong. They can accumulate and pass from one species to the next through food chain. That is correct. So answer is C, one and three. So there are toxic chemicals that adversely affect human health and environment around the world. They can be transported by wind and water, and they persist for long periods of time. And under the treaty known as Stockholm Convention, countries agreed to reduce or eliminate the production of 12 key POPs these days. And question number ten: Which among the following pollutants are covered under the Stockholm Convention? Dioxin, pheromones, aldrins. Answer is all of the above. So apart from that, these are the chemicals that are covered there. and they include 12 key pops so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss 21st november 2017 mcqs consider the following statements polavaram is a multi purpose irrigation project which is under construction and located on river godavari that is correct polavaram project can help divert and utilize godavari water to krishna and other rivers so answer is c both one and two so it is a multi purpose irrigation project which is under construction and located on river godavari in west godavari district of andhra 
and Polavaram project dam being built on river Godavari can help divert and utilize Godavari water to Krishna and other rivers. Question number two, which of the following is the first city in India to introduce electric public transportation model in India? Answer here is D. Nagpur. Sustained owned IOC in collaboration with Ola unveiled the electric charging station at one of its petrol diesel stations in Nagpur. Ola is just like an Indian startup like Uber. And Nagpur is the first city in India to introduce electric public transportation model in India. Question number three Fame India schemes are related to. So it is basically faster adoption and manufacturing of electric and hybrid vehicles in India. So it is to promote large scale adoption of electric vehicles. So Fame India, the form is faster adoption and manufacturing of electric and hybrid vehicles in India, is meant to promote large scale adoption of electric vehicles and multimodal public transport. Question number 4 India has improved her position in terms of GDP per capita of countries. That is correct, India's GDP per capita is more than Brazil and South Africa, but uh, lower than that of Russia and China. In all the BRICS countries, India is at lowest, so answer here is A1 only. India has moved up one position to 126 in terms of GDP per capita, but it is still ranked lower than all its BRICS peers, that is Brazil, Russia, China, and South Africa. And Qatar remains the world's richest country on this parameter of GDP per capita. World Economic Outlook Report is released annually by International Monetary Fund. That is correct. World Economic Outlook Report ranks countries in terms of per capita GDP based on purchasing power parity. Answer here is C both 1 and 2. So WEO report is released annually by the IMF and WEO reports ranks over 200 countries in terms of per capita GDP based on PPP. It, what is PPP? It is the rate at which the currency of one country needs to be converted into that of a second country to ensure that a given amount of the first country's currency will purchase the same volume of goods and services in the second country as it does in the first. Question number 6. Consumer services has been affected more from the GST than the consumer goods. That is correct. GST has reduced the indirect tax burden on most consumer goods, fitting them into lower rate slabs than before. Answer here is C both 1 and 2. So consumer services have been affected more from the GST than the consumer goods and uh, indirect tax burden on most consumer goods is reduced and uh, fitting them into lower rate tax slabs than before but it has raised effective taxes on services and consumer goods firms have therefore been able to utilize the savings from GST to customers back with discounts, lower selling price etc. As per the RBI regulation which among the following is covered under willful default Deliberate on payment of the dues that is there, spiffing of funds of the determinant to the defaulting unit that is correct, disposal removal of securities without bank's knowledge. So answer here is D all of the above. So a willful defaulter is an entity or a person that has not paid the loan back despite the ability to repay it. It covers several broad areas like deliberate non-payment of bills, siphoning of funds to the detriment of the bank. Uh, assets and proceeds have been utilized, misinterpretation, falsification of records, disposal removal of securities without bank's knowledge, fraudulent transaction by the borrower. Question number 8 Which among the following is the principal goal of NASA's Juno spacecraft? It is basically related to Jupiter to understand the origin and evolution of Jupiter. So, Juno's is the principal goal is to understand the origin and evolution of Jupiter, and underneath its dense cloud cover, Jupiter safeguards secrets to the fundamental processes and conditions that governed our solar system during its formation and uh, as a primary example of a giant planet Jupiter can also provide critical knowledge for understanding the planetary systems being discovered among other stars Question number 9 Consider the following statements Photosynthesis involves taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to convert it into sugar during sunlight that is correct Drought resistant plants such as cacti, agaves and succulents are able to take up CO2 during the cooler night which reduces water loss and store captured CO2 in the malic acid inside the cells. So these are C4 plants and they are called as CAM pathway. Okay. So answer is C4 1 and 2. So drop resistant plants which are called as C4 pathway or CAM pathway such as cactus, again succulents are able to take up CO2 during the cooler night which reduces the water loss and store captured CO2 as malic acid inside the cell and it will allow the CO2 to release and finally uh, be helpful to us. Question number 10 The right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition, rehabilitation, and resettlement act 2013 requires the consent of. See, if you are doing it for private project, you need the consent of at least 80% people. If you are doing it 
PPP project you need 70%. So answer here is A1 only. 80% of landowners to be obtained for private projects, the permission and 70% in case of landowners for PPP projects. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss the MCQs for 22nd number and we are trying a new look. So be here with us. Choose the correct statements about rad sanders. It is an aromatic sandalwood endemic to southern western ghats. This is wrong. They are southern eastern ghats. They are not aromatic. It is listed as an endangered species by UCN. That is correct. So answer here is B2 only. They are listed as endangered but they are not aromatic and they are endemic to southern eastern ghats. Which of the following attributes of Kaveri river? Mm, Noyal, Lakshman, Tirth, Shimsha are there but Vam Sadhara is not there. It is a short eastern coastal river near Odisha and Andhra Pradesh border. So answer here is C. So Vam Sadhara is a short eastern coastal river near Odisha and Andhra Pradesh border. Question number 3. Apart from the normal cracking process of petroleum, pet coke can also be derived from oil sands. Yes, that is correct. Pet coke is a relatively cleaner source of energy. This is wrong. It has a higher energy content. But it emits 30 to 80 percent more carbon dioxide than coal per unit of weight. So this is wrong. Answer here is A1 only. So it can be derived from oil refining and also from bitumen extracted from oil sands. And as pet coke is a higher energy content, pet coke emits between 30 and 80 percent more CO2 than coal per unit of weight. Question number four. Consider the following statements about Brahmos, the world's fastest supersonic cruise missile. It can be launched from submarine ships, aircraft, or land. That is correct. It has a maximum range of 1000 kilometers and can reach up to a speed of 5 marks. Uh, that is wrong. Brahmos can reach a speed of 2.8 marks. So answer is, and even this is 290 kilometers. So answer is A. Uh, question number 5. The rating agency Moody's has upgraded India's sovereign rating despite an economic slowdown. In recent quarters, what could be the possible reasons for that? High shock absorbing capacity of Indian economy? Yes. Plan for recapitalization of PSUs, public sector banks? Yes. Measures like demonetization and GSTS, so answer is D. So combined with a large and diversified economy and improving global competitiveness, which boosts economic strength, Moody's assessed India's economic shock absorption capacity at high. While measurements, measures like demonetization and GST have undermined near-term growth, as disruption fades, it is expected to see a re rebound in real and nominal GDP growth. And they also termed the government's massive 2.11 lakh crore plan for recapitalization of public banks as credit positive. Question number 6. Consider the following statements about the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Its members also include countries from continents other than Europe. That is correct. The United States is the biggest shareholder in this institution. This is also correct. So, besides Europe, members of EBRD are from five continents, North America, Africa, Asia and Australia, with the biggest stakeholder being the US. So, the name is somewhat of a misnomer. Question number 7. India is planning to develop Rovuma gas field in East Africa and which of the following country. So, here like countries like Somalia etc. It's very difficult to do anything. So, answer here is uh, Mozambique. Okay. So, answer here is B. So, India and Mozambique have agreed to expedite development of the giant Rovuma, Rovuma gas discovery which is planned to be converted into LNG for exports. Question number 8. Which of the following has not been matched correctly? So Gripen is fighter jets uh, like uh, that is not matched correctly. So Gripen is Swedish, it is not Switzerland, it is Sweden. Okay, so that is why it is not matched correctly. But F-16 block 70 fighter jets from US, Dissault Rafale is from France, Sukhoi is from Ch Russia. Question number 9, which of the following power projects in Kashmir are being constructed on Chenab Basin? Sawalkot, Kirthai, Pakal, Dhul, Bursar all are there but it is very important that you remember that Uri project is being constructed on river uh, Jhelum so that is also correct so Uri project is being constructed on river Jhelum and question number 10 often in the news the Minuteman 3 refers to so it is basically an ICBM missile intercontinental ballistic missile of the United States so of all the weapons in the US nuclear arsenal, ICBM is one of the most likely to cause accidental nuclear war, arms control specialists say. They say that in the event of an apparent enemy attack, a precedent decision to launch must be made so fast that there would be no time to verify the threat. False warnings could arise from human error, malfunctioning early warning satellites or hacking by third parties. And once launched America's current generation of ICBM missile, the Minuteman 3, they cannot be recalled. So thank you for watching this lesson.
Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss the 23rd November 2017 MCQs. Let's get started. Question number one, M-Stripes is an app to count the tigers more accurately by decreasing the human errors. That is correct. That is monitoring system for tigers, intensive protection and ecological status. The app M-Stripes has been developed by the Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun. Both of these statements are correct. And though the app has already been in place, it is usage and application has been made mandatory for the upcoming 4th All India Tiger Estimation. Question number two, consider the following statements. Bandipur National Park has the second largest population of tigers in the world. That is correct. Absolutely correct. Kaziranga National Park has the highest population of tigers in the world. Absolutely wrong. It has the highest density. The answer is A, one only. It has the third highest population. And the tiger density in Kaziranga is 13 per 100 square kilometer. Followed by Jim Corbett National Park 11 in Uttarakhand and Bandipur 10.28. And as for tiger estimation, Kaziranga has 103 big cats and it has uh, second number is like 215 is in uh, Corbett and 120 is in Pandipur. Okay, so answer here is only the first is correct um, because they have the second largest population of tigers in the world. Okay, question number three India's nominee to the International Court of Justice, Dalvir Bandali, has been re elected to the court. That is correct. This is the first time since the ICJ was established in 1945 that there will be no British judge in the ICJ. That is also correct. So answer is C, both 1 and 2. Because Britain withdraw its candidates from the election. And Dalvir Bandari has been re-elected to the 5th and the last seat of the World Court. Because Britain withdrew its candidate from the election. And after World War II, this is the first time no British judge will be there. Which among the following are the qualification of International Court of Justice judges? A judge should have a high moral character. Obviously, a judge should fit to the qualification of appointment of highest judicial officers as prescribed by their respective states. That is also correct. A judge should be jury consult of recognized competence in international law. These are the criteria. These are the qualifications rather of ICJ judges. All three are required. Question number five. Consider the following statements. World Forum of Fish Harvester and Fish Workers is an international organization that bring together large scale fisher organization. Here usually a small scale so this is wrong. A World Fisheries Forum advocating for a global mandate of sustainable fishing practices and policies has been established at the World Forum of Fish Harvesters and Fish Workers meeting in New Delhi. That is correct. So answer is B. So a world in which the voices of small scale fishers are heard, their rights recognized and respected and their livelihood guaranteed. Question number six consider the following statements about NAPA, that is National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority. It enforces prices and availability of medicines in the country under the Drugs Prices Control Order 1995. That is correct. The organization is also interested with the task of recovering amounts overcharged by manufacturers for the controlled drugs from the consumers. So that is also correct. It also monitors the prices of decontrolled drugs in order to keep them at reasonable levels. All these statements are absolutely correct. So National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority answer is D all of the above. So it is an organization of the government of India which was established to fix, revise the prices of controlled bulk drugs and formulations and to enforce prices and availability of medicines in the country under the Drugs Price Control Order of 1995. And it is also entrusted with the task of recovering amounts overcharged by manufacturers for the controlled drugs from the consumers. And it also monitors the prices of decontrolled drugs in order to keep them at reasonable levels. Question number 7. Papua New Guinea is the largest of all the Pacific Island nations. Uh, yes, this is correct. Indian diaspora constitutes 40% of Papua New Guinea. Nahi, nahi, that is in Fiji. So answer here is A, one only. So Indian diaspora in Fiji constitutes 40% of Fiji's total population. Question number 8. Consider the following statements. India is a founder member of ILO which came into existence in 1919. That is correct. The principal means of action in the ILO is setting up of international standards in the form of conventions, recommendations and protocols. So that is also correct. So answer is C, both 1 and 2. And recently India has ratified two fundamental conventions of the ILO, namely Minimum Wage Convention and Worst Forms of Child Labor Conventions. Question number 9. The South Asia Sub-Regional Economic Cooperation SASEC program aims to promote regional prosperity by improving cross-border connectivity boosting trade member countries and strengthening boosting trade among member countries and strengthening regional economic cooperation that is correct but world bank is not there asian development bank is there so answer is a one only so asian development bank is the secretariat and lead financer of the sasec program last question of the day project saksham is related to it is basically the bolster the it network for the new gst regime so answer is a 
सो द गवर्नमेंट हैज़ अप्रूव प्रोजेक्ट सक्षम टू बोलस्टर दी आई टी नेटवर्क फॉर द न्यू जी एस टी रेजीम सो थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस लेसन हेजा इज वॉट्सअप सो वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी फोर्थ नवंबर टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एम सी क्यूज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट ब्रह्मोस इज अ बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल दिस इज रॉन्ग ब्रह्मोस इज अ सुपर सोनिक क्रूज मिसाइल एंड ब्रह्मोस कैन बी लॉन्च फ्रॉम लैंड एयर एंड मास्क दैट इज करेक्ट सो आंसर इज बी टू ओनली सो ब्रह्मोस इज जॉइंट वेंचर बिटवीन इंडिया एंड रशिया एंड नेम्ड आफ्टर द ब्रह्मपुत्र एंड मॉस्को रिवर्स ऑफ द टू कंट्रीज एंड इन द माइल स्टोन ऑफ ब्रह्मोस विच ए सुपर सोनिक क्रूज मिसाइल वॉज फायर्ड सक्सेसफुली फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम फ्रॉम सिखोई थर्टी एम के वन फाइव फाइटर एयरक्राफ्ट ऑफ इंडियन एयरफोर्स ब्रह्मोस एक वर्ल्ड क्लास वेपन है अब जो कि मल्टी प्लेटफॉर्म मल्टी मिशन रोल के लिए तैयार है एंड इट इज ऑल्सो नाउ केपेबल ऑफ बींग लॉन्च फ्रॉम लैंड सी एयर एंड कम्प्लीटिंग द टेक्टिक्स क्रूज मिसाइल ट्राइड फॉर इंडिया और फिर इंडियन एयरफोर्स इज द फर्स्ट एयरफोर्स इन द वर्ल्ड टू हैव सक्सेसफुली फायर्ड एंड एयर लॉन्च टू पॉइंट एट मार्क सर्फेस अटैक सर्फेस मिसाइल ऑफ दिस कैटेगरी वेरी वेरी बिग पॉइंट एंड द रेंज इज अराउंड टू नाइन्टी किलोमीटर्स विच अमंग द फॉलोइंग वर्दी ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन द इंदिरा सानी केस बैकवर्ड क्लासेज ऑफ द सिटीजन्स ऑफ इन इन आर्टिकल सिक्सटीन फोर कैन बी आइडेंटिफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ कास्ट एंड नॉट ऑन द इकोनॉमिक बेसिस दैट इज करेक्ट क्रीम लेयर कैन बी एंड मस्ट भी एलिमिनेट फ्रॉम बैकवर्ड क्लासेज दिस इज करेक्ट देर शुड नॉट बी नो रिजर्वेशन इन प्रमोशन दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो आंसर इज डी ऑल ऑफ द अबाउ सो ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट रिजर्वेशन कोटा फॉर बैकवर्ड क्लासेज एंड द गवर्मेंट नोटिफिकेशन रिजर्विंग टेन परसेंट गवर्मेंट जॉब्स फॉर इकोनॉमिकली बैकवर्ड क्लासेज अमंग द हायर कास्ट वर्स चैलेंज इन दी सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन दी इंदिरा सवाना सहानी केस ऑफ क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री चेक लिलिका चेक चिलिका लेक इज एशिया लार्जेस्ट ब्रैकिश वाटर लगून तो ये स्टेटमेंट तो बिल्कुल सही है और नालबंदा बर्ड सेंचुरी इज विजिटेड बाय द माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स इज लोकेटेड इनसाइड द चिलिका लेक तो ये भी सही है आंसर हो जाएगा इसका सी बोथ वन एंड टू तो ये लार्जेस्ट ब्रैकिश वाटर लगून है इसका एस्चुर एंड कैरेक्टर है दैट्स प्रॉल्स अलॉन्ग द ईस्ट कोस्ट यहाँ पे एक बहुत ही टिपिकल डॉल्फिन मिलती है वाइट कलर की इसको बोलते हैं इरावती डॉल्फिन आइवरी कलर की इट इज़ द लार्जेस्ट विंटरिंग ग्राउंड और फॉर माइग्रेटरी वाटरफॉल फाउंड एनी वेयर ऑन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट और ए वन ऑफ द हॉटस्पॉट ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी इंडिया का चौथा क्वेश्चन देखते हैं उड़ीसा गवर्नमेंट हैज अनाउंसड कि एक ब्रॉड फेस्टिवल होगा फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम ताकि वो डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स और देर नंबर्स को थोड़ा बढ़ा चढ़ा के बता सकें उड़ीसा गवर्नमेंट का इनिशिएटिव पहला स्टेट स्पॉन्सर्ड बर्ड फेस्टिवल होगा इंडिया में ये गलत है फर्स्ट स्टेट स्पॉन्सर्ड था गुजरात का तो आंसर हो जाएगा ए वन ओनली इट इज़ मैंडेटरी टू रजिस्टर क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स कंडक्टेड इन इंडिया इन द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल रजिस्टर इंडिया ये तो सही बात है और कंपनीज एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जिन्होंने रजिस्टर किया है क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स के लिए इंडिया में उनको मैंडेटरी डिस्क्लोज करने होते हैं आउटकम्स ऑफ द टेस्ट विद इन ईयर ऑफ कंप्लीटिंग दैम तो आंसर हो जाएगा सी बोथ वन एंड टू सो फ्रॉम अप्रैल टू थाउजेंड एटीन कंपनीज एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैव रजिस्टर्ड फॉर क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स इन इंडिया एंड दे हैव टू डिस्कलोज द आउटकम्स ऑफ द टेस्ट विद इन ईयर ऑफ कंप्लीटिंग दैम छठा क्वेश्चन देखते हैं कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट द स्टैंडिंग कमेटी इन इंडिया द सिस्टम ऑफ स्टैंडिंग कमेटी वॉज इंस्टीट्यूटेड बाई पार्लियामेंट इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री तो ये स्टेटमेंट बिल्कुल सही है so, जो इस सच इस कमेटी होती है वो ऑर्गेनाइज ऑन द लाइन ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट्स एंड मिनिस्ट्री हैं ये भी सही है एंड दे मे एग्जाम इन द वर्किंग ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट वेरियस स्कीम ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट सब सही है तो सिस्टम ऑफ डिपार्टमेंटली रिलेटेड स्टैंडिंग कमेटी वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री अभी चौबीस ऐसी कमेटी है ऑर्गेनाइज ऑन द लाइन्स ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट एंड मिनिस्ट्रीज and these standing committees examine bills that are referred to them and they also plan examine the expenditure plan of ministers of the in, in the union budget and they may examine the working of the departments and various schemes of the government recently which of the following countries has unveiled plans for a syria peace progress in a bid to end six year civil war answer is russia so russian president has unveiled plans for a syrian peace congress in a bid to end the six year civil war which has left uh, syrian tatters फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन ने डिसाइड किया है डिवोल्यूशन फार्मूला फॉर रेवेन्यू शेयरिंग विद इन द सेंटर एंड स्टेट्स फ्रॉम द ईयर सो दिस विल बी फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड फाइन फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन विल डिसाइड द डिवोल्यूशन फार्मूला फॉर रेवेन्यू शेयरिंग बिटवीन द सेंटर एंड स्टेट्स फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन यूरोपियन बैंक फॉर रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन एंड डेवलपमेंट वॉज एस्टेब्लिश इसलिए क्यों एस्टेब्लिश किया था ताकि एक नया पोस्ट कॉल्ड वॉर एरा बनाया जा सके सेंट्रल और ईस्टर्न यूरोप में ये सही है ओनली
एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट द ई पी आर डी ई बी आर डी बेसिकली यूरोपियन बैंक फॉर रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन एंड डेवलपमेंट सो ई बी आर डी असिस्ट ओनली दोज कंट्रीज विच आर कमिटेड टू और अप्लाइंग द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मल्टी पार्टी डेमोक्रेसी एंड प्रोलोरिज्म मतलब सबको नहीं प्रमोट करते फिर सेफ गार्डिंग द एनवायरमेंट एंड अ कमिटमेंट टू सस्टेनेबल एनर्जी और सेंट्रल टू ई बी आर ई बी डी आर यूनिकली फॉर अ डेवलपमेंट बैंक जो ई बी आर डी है वो पॉलिटिकल मैंडेट है कि उनको सिर्फ सिक्स कंट्रीज का एसेट लेना है एंड कमिटेड टू एंड अपलाइंग द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मल्टी पार्टी डेमोक्रेसी एंड प्लोरिज्म फिर सेफ गार्डिंग द एनवायरमेंट एंड कमिटी टू सस्टेनेबल एनर्जी एंड कमिटमेंट टू सस्टेनेबल एनर्जी और ऑल्सो सेंट्रल टू ई बी डी आर एक्टिविटी सो थैंक यू वॉचिंग दिस लेसन हे गाइज व्हाट्सअप सो टूडे इज ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ नवंबर टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एंड मैनी ऑफ यू आर स्टिल नॉट प्रिपेयरिंग सीरियसली See so I'll start this lesson with a message that uh, see it's the point of your life and death literally it's a point of your entire life and uh, just 6 months are remaining it is about 190 days and uh, if you don't prepare it well then you are fooling yourself and you should not waste your prime youth in this so solve these questions meticulously write your marks in the comments below that how many you are getting try to solve for I have told you again and again. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. November is almost getting over. So if you are not solving them properly, if you are not, let's say, doing justice to your preparation, then you are going to fail. And uh, the odds are that it is not your first attempt, and you have already failed before. So you know that it does not taste that sweet as like people say. So I am just saying that please take it seriously and. Uh, and at the end of the day you will be the biggest loser right so question number 1 as per the constitutional provisions the total number of seats for the scheduled tribe should be in proportion to their population so this statement is absolutely correct as per the delimitation act of uh, 2002 the number of seats in an assembly of any state can only be readjusted on the basis of the first census which is conducted after 2026 both these statements are correct so this is in relation with the basically northeastern states if you go 90% sometimes 100% seats in public bodies are reserved for the tribal okay so both these statements are correct which among the following tribes are found in sikkim so tamang limbu bhutia lepcha all these tribes are found in sikkim so answer here becomes d all of the above so sikkim is a state which was not the part of india about 30 years ago and in 1975 it became the part of india through 36th constitutional amendment act of 1975 so about 40 years ago it became part of india okay not 30 40 sorry so tamang limbu bhutia lepcha these are the major tribes of sikkim question number 3 karnataka has emerged as a major exporter of palm granite to the european markets Yes, this is hundred percent correct. So areas around Bangalore, where I am living currently, they have emerged as a major exporter of palm granite to the European markets. Peeled palm granite does not have to undergo strict phytosanitary measures. So here it is. Uh, this is absolutely correct. So this is the reason. So answer here is C, both one and two. So areas around Bangalore and Karnataka have emerged as a major exporter of palm granite to the European markets. one of the major reasons for this is that the peeled palm granite it does not have to undergo strict phytosanitary measures now sanitary and phytosanitary measures are the measures to protect humans animals plants from diseases pests contaminants etc so it is very stringent if you want to export your products there so they have these very high regulations and uh, us western europe markets they will not allow the export unless it complies with the regulations which among the following are considered a tree under the indian forest act bamboo is not a tree it has been recently removed removed from the list of trees brushwood palms are trees so answer here is b2 and 3 so bamboo has recently been removed from the list of plant species considered tree under the indian forest act which is still con- considers palms stumps brushwood and canes as trees biologically some of it is not correct बट uh, चलता है कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इंडिया हैज द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट एरिया अंडर बैम्बू कल्टिवेशन लाइक एरिया वाइज इट इज देयर येस दिस इज करेक्ट इंडिया हैज द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ बैम्बू स्पीसीज इन दर्ल्ड 
this statement is wrong china has the maximum number of bamboo species in the world so answer here becomes a one only and though india has 19% share of the world's area under bamboo cultivation its market share in the sector is only 6% so that statement is definitely not correct in which of the following cases supreme court of india had declared that the state cannot cite concerns about a hostile audience in curbing freedom of expression so here answer is s rangarajan versus p jagjeevan ram so in this case the supreme court declared that the state cannot cite concerns about a hostile audience in curbing freedom of expression so a lot of issues are going on in india related to this unfortunately which one of the following comes under the mandate of asean 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 is a, like a group of 10 nations association of southeast asian nations and the mandate uh it includes counter terrorism disaster management climate change all of these are included there so all these three are included so answer here becomes d all of the above it is very important that you remember the name of the asean countries and what is their mandate and uh, so the mandate of asean asean is association of southeast asian nations like read it about it in as detail as possible and it has been widened over the years to basically include climate change disaster management counter terrorism among others okay then question number 8 consider the following statements sikkim is governed under a special constitutional provision given by article 371f so this statement is correct article 170 of the constitution does not apply to sikkim so this is also correct so answer here becomes c both 1 and 2 so sikkim is governed under special constitutional provision of article 371f which distinguishes from other states and article 170 of the constitution like which talks about delimitation commission uh, it does not apply to sikkim so it has some special status so please remember these points it will come in handy uh, question number 9 123rd amendment of the constitution is related to first of all it is not amendment act it is amendment bill okay so please remember this point so national commission of backward classes is a, a statutory body till now but if we talk about national commission of scheduled caste and national commission of scheduled tribes so these are like uh, these bodies are uh, basically having constitutional status what do you mean by it is that they are mentioned in the constitution of india so similarly the national commission of backward class they want uh, it to become a constitutional body there are a lot of benefits regarding that so answer here is constitutional status to the national commission for backward class and uh, the 123rd amendment bill of the constitution is related to giving constitutional status to the national commission for backward class and right now it is a statutory body so what do you mean by that is it is established by law of parliament or state legislature as the case may be so that is the meaning of the word statutory okay so uh question number 10 which among the following is a mandate of the national commission for backward classes so to recommend inclusion or exclusion of a community from central list yes this is correct to hear complaints of the obcs and protect their interests so no this is wrong it is still with national commission for scheduled castes so answer here is a one only so the power to hear complaints of the obcs and protect their interest it remains still with the national commission for scheduled castes okay so please take it seriously write down in the score in the comments and thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so today is 26 november 2017 a lazy sunday going on but it's time to like wrap it up and just start studying man like just 6 months remaining so please please buck up and uh, like don't take it lightly otherwise your life will go awry anyway so let's get started with our mcqs you know what to do uh, when telling you again and again april may june july august september october november by this time you should have covered all these mcqs because upsc is now asking from 1 and 1/2 years 1.25 years rather than just 1 year who among the following was the chairman of the drafting committee of the indian constitution so here the answer is b r ambedkar so just a like an easy question just to get everything started so dr bhim rao ambedkar uh, he was the chairman of the drafting committee of the indian constitution he is considered as the father of indian constitution 
and his contribution in the indian constitution is like second to none okay consider the following statements interstate council is a statutory body it is absolutely wrong because anything which is mentioned in the constitution is a constitutional body and article 263 of the constitution talks about the interstate council so it is definitely a constitutional body it is not a uh, statutory body so first is wrong now if you apply your brain if the first statement is wrong then the only option that can be correct is b2 and 3 because a can't be correct c can't be correct d can't be correct so 2 and 3 has to be correct so please apply your brains while you're doing mcqs it will really help you interstate council was established on the recommendation of sarkaria commission that statement is absolutely correct interstate council provides an institutional mechanism to facilitate coordination of policies their implementation within the union and state governments so that is also correct so answer here is b2 and 3 so it is a constitutional body set up on the basis of provisions in article 263 of the constitution question number three consider the following statements about the composition of the interstate council home minister is the chairman of interstate council this is wrong prime minister is the chairman of the interstate council so since first is wrong the answer has to be b2 and 3 so there are a lot of upsc questions where if you can eliminate one statement you will get the answer chief minister of all the states union territories having legislative assemblies administration administrators of union territories not having legislative assemblies and governors of states under president's rule are member of the council that is correct five ministers of cabinet rank nominated by the chairman of the council are permanent invitees to the council obviously that has to be correct because first is wrong so second and third have to be correct so answer is b2 and 3 so prime minister is the chairman of the interstate council which is a recommendatory body okay question number 4 which of the following <coughs> was or were the among the mandates of the punchi commission which had submitted its report in 2010 so national security is there for sure communal harmony is there center state financial relations are also there so planning is the fourth mandate so answer here becomes d all of the above so national security communal harmony center state financial relations and planning were among the mandates of the punchi commission which had submitted its report in 2010 okay uh, fresh elections are held whenever the public choose overwhelmingly the not option no no it has nothing to do there is no weightage of not option absolutely except some moral weightage there is no re-election candidates who fail to uh, nota in the first election are banned from contesting the fresh polls so this is not wrong this is like they are not banned okay so answer here is d neither one nor two so both these statements are wrong there is no like inherent value in this except some legal repercussions uh, moral repercussions rather uh, question number six which of the following countries helped to strike a deal between myanmar and bangladesh on rohingya refugees so basically so rohingyas are basically people who are living in rakhine state of myanmar and they have like five lakhs of them have gone to bangladesh over last 20 years and some thousands of them have come to India as well. So it was the China who helped to strike a deal between Myanmar and Bangladesh. So recently China had helped to strike a deal between Myanmar and Bangladesh on the Rohingya refugee crisis. Question number 7. Consider the following statements. Amnesty International is a London-based non-governmental organization focused on human rights. Yes, this is absolutely correct. Amnesty considers capital punishment to be the ultimate irreversible denial of human rights. Yes, so they want that all the countries in the world should do away with the capital punishment. Okay, like they don't kill the people basically by the state. And the organization was awarded the 1977 Nobel Peace Prize for its campaign against torture and the United Nations Prize in the field of human rights in 1978. So all these are statements about Amnesty International. So whenever you talk about human rights or anything like that, so I would strongly suggest that you quote Amnesty International in your answers. It will go a long way. It will give you a lot of marks if you can do that. So it is a London-based NGO focused on human rights. And uh, majority of the countries in the world have gone away with capital punishment. But there are countries like India, Saudi Arabia, China where capital punishment is still prevalent. And the statements are absolutely correct. Rest of them. Question number 8. Recently, which of the following countries has made history after becoming the first country in the world to ban the metal mining? So answer here is... A, El Salvador. So El Salvador has become the first country in the entire world to ban the metal mining. It is a very, very, very big step. 
I can't, I can't emphasize on this how big this step is okay so like if more countries can do it then the world will be a better place consider the following statements about rashtriya vayoshri yojana okay the scheme aims at providing senior citizens with such assisted living devices which can store near normalcy in their bodily functions overcoming the disability infirmity manifested okay that statement is 100% correct the scheme covers senior citizens from all the strata of the society uh, that is wrong it just covers the bpl people below poverty line are covered here so answer here is a that is one only so rashtriya vayoshri yojana aims at providing senior citizens belonging to below poverty level category and suffering from any of the age related disability or infirmity like low vision hearing impairment loss of teeth locomotor disability and uh, with such assisted living devices which can restore near normalcy in their bodily functions overcoming the disability or infirmity manifested okay so i think such yojanas are very important and you should remember them by heart and the last question for the today is let's say this is this has come in the upsc exam consider the following statements about chilika lagoon it is the largest lagoon in the world so whenever they talk about largest biggest usually it is not right it is the largest lagoon in india because the odds are that it can't be in the world and it is the second largest lagoon in the world after the new caledonian barrier reef in new caledonia so first statement is wrong and it is the largest wintering ground for migratory waterfowl found anywhere on the indian subcontinent that statement is correct and chilika is basically present in odisha and it is uh, very close to bhubaneswar not that far basically chilika was designated as the first ramsar site of india uh, so answer here is b that is 2 and 3 so it is the first lake and everything is absolutely correct so thank you for watching this lesson Hey guys what's up so let us discuss 27th November 2017 MCQs again i will urge that please take them seriously do not do half packet work here thoda dhang se padhai karna hai theek hai try to solve them and try to remember stuff just don't just watch it passively uh, don't just watch it passively make notes out of it aditya alwan which was recently in news is so it is basically isro solar mission so answer here is a so aditya alwan is isro solar mission and uh, It will lose somewhere in two thousand nineteen or two thousand twenty to do imaging and study of the sun, etc. Okay, so just remember Aditya L one is solar mission. Please remember this. Direct questions are asked like that. Which among the following correctly defines the term solar cycle? Okay, an occurrence in which sun spots form on the face of the sun, glowing, growing in size and number, eventually diminishing. That is correct. The cycle from the birth to death of a star that is now time taken by the earth to complete one revolution of the sun that is called as year <laughs> answer here is a so solar cycle is an occurrence in which sun spots caused by the sun's magnetic field they form on the face of the sun they grow in size and number and eventually diminish all over a period of roughly 11 years so that is how long a solar cycle can last Consider the following statements about the Lagrange point. It is placed in space at which, due to the delicate balance of gravitational forces, the satellite will require very little energy to maintain its orbit. There are five Lagrange points around major bodies such as planet or a star. Answer here is C, both one and two. Both these statements are absolutely correct. So, Lagrange point is a place in space at which, due to the delicate balance of gravitational forces. satellites will require very little energy to maintain its orbit and there are five lagrange points around the major bodies such as a planet or a star the first point l1 lies between earth and the sun at about 1 million miles from the earth l2 also lies about a million miles from the earth but in the opposite direction of the sun and the third lagrange point l3 lies behind the sun okay and uh, l4 and l5 lie along earth's orbit at 60 degrees ahead of and behind earth So these are the points. If you put the satellite there, it requires very less energy. Uh, question number four. Consider the following statements. The corona is the outer layer that we see during total solar eclipse. Yes, one hundred percent correct. 
Corona is millions of degrees hotter than sun surface. Now people will think that sun surface has to be hotter, but the actual reality is Corona can reach 10 million times. Okay, millions of degrees of Celsius temperature can go there. Answer here is C, both one and two. Uh, so during a total solar eclipse, when you are talking about a total solar eclipse, the moon will pass between the Earth and the Sun. That is a given fact. And when this happens, the moon blocks out the bright light of the sun and the glowing white corona can there be seen surrounding the eclipse sun now this corona can reach extremely high temperature however the corona is very dim because the corona is about 10 million times less dense than the sun's surface however it is very dim so that is why it is very dim and this low density makes the corona much less bright than the surface of the sun itself question number five consider the following statements a coronagraph is a telescope that can see things very close to the sun Yes, that is correct. A coronagraph can be used only on satellites to observe the sun. Uh, that is wrong. So answer only word is wrong here. Answer is a one only. So coronagraph is a device which blocks the light from the center of the telescope beam, but it permits the light from surrounding sources to pass through relatively undisturbed. And it is possible to use coronagraph from the top of a tall mountain on earth as well. Although we cannot see the corona as far from the solar disk as we can see it in the uh, space. Uh, question number 6. Consider the following statements about ISRO's upcoming solar mission Aditya L1. This will be the first experiment to measure the coronal magnetic field from a space platform. So that is correct. It will be first 100% Indian mission which will not only negotiate a challenging orbit but will also benefit the global scientific community in understanding the sun. So that is also correct. So answer here becomes C. Both 1 and 2. So, ISRO's upcoming solar mission Aditya L1 will be the first experiment to measure the coronal magnetic field from a space platform. It will be the first 100% Indian mission which will not only negotiate a challenging orbit but will also benefit the global scientific community in understanding the sun. So, answer here becomes C, uh, both 1 and 2. Question number 7, which of the following animals have become extinct from wild in the Indian subcontinent? Indian aurochs are gone, Indian cheetah is gone, Sivatherium, all these are gone. So answer here is D, all of the above. None of these animals are found in India in the wild. So some of the animals which have become extinct from wild in the Indian subcontinent includes Indian aurochs, Indian cheetah, Sivatherium, Sumatran rhinoceros. Yes, Sumatran rhinoceros was present in Indian subcontinent, but not anymore, sir and ma'am, not anymore. Let's protect them while we can. Question number 8. Consider the following statements about the functions and the duties of the Interstate Council. Inquiring into and advising upon disputes which may have arisen between among states. Yes, that is correct. Investigating and discussing subjects in which some or all of these states or the union and one or more of these states have a common interest. So that is also correct. Making recommendations upon any subject any such subject for the better coordination of policy and action with respect to that subject. So answer here is D, all of the above, all these statements are correct. So the functions and the duties of interstate councils are inquiring into and advising upon disputes which may have arisen between among the states, investigating and discussing subjects in which some or all of the states or union and one or the more state have a common interest and making recommendation upon any such subject for the better coordination of policy and action with respect to that subject. So that was related to Interstate Council. Question number 9. Which among the following aircrafts are operated by the Indian Air Force? MiG-21 for sure. Uh, Jaguar is yes. Mirage 2000 is also there. And F-16 is basically manufactured by USA. So they are not by Indian as of now. Answer here becomes A123. The Indian Air Force, one of the largest in the world, operates a diverse mix of legacy and modern fighter jets including MiG-21, MiG-27, MiG-29, Jaguar, Mirage 2000, okay, Sukhoi 30 MK-1, light combat aircraft Tejas and it is an indigenously built one. A final question for the day is consider the following statements. The sloth bear Melurus ursinus is endemic to the Indian subcontinent. Yes, 100% correct. It is only found in the Indian subcontinent and nowhere else in the entire world. That is what we mean by the word endemic. The largest population of the sloth bear is in the northeast India. That is wrong. 
it is in the central india a nomadic tribe known as the kalandars began dancing sloth wears for the emperor during the mughal era so that is also correct so answer here is c 1 and 3 so as you can see the largest population of sloth wear is in central india and if you were going in a small town then you would have seen these people who used to come with them so thank you for watching this lesson guys what's up so let us discuss 28th november 2017 mcqs let's get started see i'm again telling you like uh, don't just revise today's mcqs go from april may june july august september october and then november and just six months are remaining exactly six months six days 3rd june 2018 please take this exam seriously please take these mcqs seriously please take the daily summary seriously and uh, study religiously okay uh, the Prime Minister of India has a role in the for appointment of which of the following? President, uh, so yes, you can say the Constitution of India has given the principal player role uh, in case of President, Vice President, Three Armed Forces Chiefs, Chief Election Commissioner. So all of them, Prime Minister has a role in the appointment. So answer becomes D, all of the above. So the Constitution of India has basically given the principal player role to the Prime Minister in the appointment of the following. It includes President, Vice President, the Three Armed Forces Chiefs, the Chief Election Commissioner, etc, etc. Question number two, the Integrated Tribal Development Agency, Integrated Tribal Development Project, Micro Projects have been acting as additional institutions for delivery of public goods and services to scheduled tribes. That is correct. These agencies function under the overall control of the Ministry of Tribal Development. Now see when you are talking about tribal, so you are talking about at a very very specific regional local level. So it makes much more sense that rather than having one union ministry, it is the state government that controls them. So it is this is wrong here, it is the state government that controls, so overall control is of the state government. So answer here is A1 only. So integrated tribal development agency, integrated tribal development project, micro projects, they have been acting as an additional institutions for delivery of public goods and services to scheduled tribes and these agencies function under the overall control of the state governments okay and not the union government question number three now rivers are like trust me upsc love rivers every year you will find two three questions on rivers in prelims interlinking of the rivers and mains river water water pollution ganga take dolphins uh, national ganga okay like authority and all like UPSC love rivers okay so Mahanadi passes through which of the following states typical typical question Mahanadi is a very major river of Odisha and Chhattisgarh so majorly Odisha Chhattisgarh also answer here is A1 and 2 only so Mahanadi basically passes through Odisha and Chhattisgarh so definitely uh, go through the map of India and locate the Mahanadi river and learn about 100 odd rivers which can be Proof of origin is a mandatory criteria for registering geographical indicators in India. Obviously, if there is no proof of concept of proof of origin rather, how will you prove that this comes from your state or not? So you have to prove it right that uh, that your this particular indicator belongs to your place. Judima is a traditional rice uh, wine which has been given GI from Assam. Uh, no, no, it has not been given geographical indicator, but the statement itself is correct, but it, the GI is not given as such. Answer here is A1 only. So Judima is a traditional rice wine from Assam which is made by Dimsa tribe but it has not been given any geographical indicator as of yet. Question number 5. As per the India state level disease burden initiative which among the following was the single largest risk factor in India in 2016. So answer here is child and maternal undernutrition. So this was the single largest risk factor in India in the last year. So as per the India state level disease burden initiative, important point, child and maternal undernutrition was the single largest risk factor in India in 2016 and it was followed by air pollution, unhealthy diet, diabetes, all these are there. But child and maternal undernutrition is number one, air pollution is number two. So if they ask you what are the two things which you want to eliminate as a district collector, then talk about child and maternal undernutrition and air pollution. Uh, question number six, consider the following statements. Net neutrality prohibits internet service providers which are called as ISPs. Who are these ISPs? Reliance, Geo, Airtel, Idea, Vodafone, etc. From speeding up or slowing down or blocking any content applications or websites on the internet. That is correct. Facebook's free basic and Airtel zero platform are initiative in the direction 
to secure net neutrality no no they are absolutely against the principle of net neutrality because if you give free basics or zero platform then you will not allow the opening of the application of others for example it has wink right so it makes wink free but for savan and spotify you have to pay a lot more data so you will use that or if facebook is free but let's say google is not free then you will try to utilize facebook much more than google so answer here is a1 only they are against the principle so try recently barred the telecom services providers for charging differential rates for data services basically it effectively prohibits facebook's free basics and airtel zero platform by airtel in their current form as they were against the principle of net neutrality and the entire world is up against the arms uh, for net neutrality and they want net neutrality question number 7 consider the following statements the 26th of november is our constitution day that is correct the constitution of india was implemented by the constituent assembly on this day in the year 1949 that is wrong it is on 26 january 1950 that it was done which is why it is celebrated as the republic day but the constitution day as such is like 26 november 1949 so the constitution of india which was implemented by the constituent assembly on 26 january 1959 is celebrated as our republic day and on 26 november 1949 we had adopted our constitution okay question number 8 islamic banking is a system of finance in which interest is not charged that is absolutely correct recently the reserve bank of india released a detailed road map for the introduction of islamic banking in india uh, this statement is absolutely wrong there is no basis for this statement so answer here is a one only so rbi has not released any road map whatsoever for the introduction of islamic banking in india okay uh, question number 9 now these questions are very very commonly asked because of the de- development by drdo hall etc what they are working on what they are developing so india is cooperating with which of the following countries to jointly develop the fifth generation fighter aircraft so india is basically coordinating with russia similarly brahmos missile is also with russia and it is based on the name of brahmaputra you know and uh, the river uh, of russia and india so answer here is b russia so we are cooperating with russia to jointly develop the fifth generation fighter aircraft that will be really great for us us and mount agung is located on which of the following so again these questions are good uh, and they are asked a lot because uh of the world geography and other factors they can ask about any mountain like at least learn the almost the top and the second top peaks of the entire world the famous peaks like mount kilimanjaro etc which is the highest peak in north america which is the highest peak in south america which is the highest peak in india okay which is the highest peak in the world which is the highest peak in antarctica all these points should be covered so bali sumatra java all these are islands of indonesia the answer here is a bali so mount agung or gunung agung is a volcano in bali indonesia southeast of mount batur volcano which is also in bali and it was in news because of the signs of possible eruption and gunung agung strato volcano is the highest point on the bali so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so today is 29th november 2017 so let us get started with our mcqs uh, question number 1 uh, these are the following uh, basically Assam is having bihu dance that is correct Telangana is not having machi dance it is uh, daman and diu daman and diu perini this is wrong perini is of telangana so answer here is a one only so the ubc has a habit of uh, lot of such uh, dances and folk dances and what not and they ask lot of such examples so assam has the bihu dance so that is there for first of all no doubt about it then in daman and diu you have machi dance machi basically means fish in andhra pradesh you have kuchipudi it is one of the classical dance okay so bihu machi dance they are not classical dance but kuchipudi is a classical dance then rajasthan having chari and ghumar dance uh, tamil nadu has karakatam thappatam and telangana perini so these are some of the famous uh, art forms here uh, consider the following statements the theme of this year's vigilance awareness week is my vision corruption free india that is correct the observance of the vigilance awareness week generally commences with the integrity pledge by public servants in the ministries departments uh, central public sector enterprises 
public sector banks uh, yes that is correct so answer here is C both 1 and 2 both these statements are correct so they are doing this this year the vigilance from 30th October to 4th November 2017 and the theme of this week would be my vision corruption free India and the observance of the vigilance awareness week would commence with the integrity pledge by public servants in the ministries departments CPSCs, public sector banks etc etc so all this becomes very important then you have question number three consider the following statements Karwar port is located uh, situated between New Mangalore port and Mormuga port uh, so yes that is correct uh, it is acclaimed as one of the best natural all weather ports on the east coast this is not east coast this is west coast so this is wrong answer here is a one only so Mangalore Mormuga all these are on west coast Karwar port is situated between the New Mangalore port and the Mormuga port and it is acclaimed as one of the best natural all weather ports on the west coast and provides all the weather uh, weathering facilities for ocean uh, going vessels and uh, it is the only port owned and administered by the state government here this in the case is Karnataka so just remember this name Karwar port uh, question number four under the adopt a heritage scheme which among the following can adopt a heritage or tourist site private sector companies for sure they can do that uh, public sector companies also can do it uh, corporate individuals also can do it so that is for sure one two three are there rw are not there so answer here is one two three so uh, the adopt a heritage scheme of ministry of tourism it was basically launched on the world tourism day in 27 september 2017 by the president of india thereafter ministry of tourism invited private sector companies public sector companies corporate individuals to adopt the sites and to take up the responsibility for making our heritage and tourism more sustainable uh, through the conservation development etc question number five uh, SBI foundation uh, so basically uh, match the following uh, SBI foundation Jantar Mantar Delhi so under adopt heritage team they have done it uh, travel corporation of India limited so they are uh, it is Matanchari Palace Museum Kochi Yatra Yatra is basically done with Leh Palace Jammu and Kashmir and National Building Construction Corporation Limited so they have done with the Purana Kila so answer is B uh, so you can see that various companies have adopted various uh, places so just have a basic idea about it they may ask you or even if they don't ask you use it in the essays it will help you a lot Question number 6. Urban heat islands effect occurs on the surface and in the atmosphere. Consider the following statements in this regard. Atmospheric urban heat islands are typically present day and night but tend to be strongest during the day. Uh, this statement is wrong. Uh, surface urban heat islands are often weak during the late morning and throughout the day and become more pronounced after sunset. So this is also wrong. They are strongest when the sun is shining. Okay. So the answer is D neither one nor two. Heat islands occurs on the surface and in the atmosphere, so that are present. And uh, surface urban heat islands are typically present in day and night, but tend to be strongest during the day when the sun is shining. So that is why the first statement is wrong because it is talking about atmospheric one. And in contrast, atmospheric urban heat islands are often weak during the late morning and throughout the day and become more pronounced after sunset due to the slow release of heat from the urban infrastructure. So basically, they have reversed the other two names. Uh, question number seven recently the home ministry has enunciated an operational strategy samadhan to so basically samadhan is to fight the left-wing extremism so the home ministry has enunciated an operational strategy samadhan to fight left-wing extremism so as for smart leadership aggressive strategy motivation and training actionable intelligence dashboard based key results area and key performance indicators harnessing technology action plan for each theater and no access to financing uh, question number eight uh, which among the following are left-wing extremism affected states in India so now there are ten left-wing extremism affected state in India surely Telangana is one of them for no doubt about it Assam is not there uh, Uttarakhand is not there Odisha is there so it is also called as the red corridor colloquially and so answer here becomes C one and four so please remember the name of these ten states which are left-wing extremism affected states so they includes UP, Bihar, uh, Jharkhand, 
एम पी छत्तीसगढ़ इज डेफिनेटली देयर महाराष्ट्र तेलंगाना आंध्र प्रदेश वेस्ट बंगाल उड़ीसा सो दीज आर द स्टेट्स विच आर अफेक्टेड बाय द लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन रिसेंटली इंडिया हैज़ बीन यूनानिमसली इलेक्टेड एज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ऑर्गन्स ऑफ द यूनाइटेड नेशंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो हेयर इंडिया हैज़ बीन इलेक्टेड फॉर यूनाइटेड नेशंस ह्यूमन सेटलमेंट्स प्रोग्राम और यू एन हैबिटाट सो आंसर हेयर इज ए सो यू एन हैबिटाट इज द यूनाइटेड नेशंस प्रोग्राम विच इज़ वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स अ बेटर अर्बन फ्यूचर एंड इट्स मिशन इज टू प्रमोट सोशली एंड एनवायरमेंटली सस्टेनेबल ह्यूमन सेटलमेंट्स डेवलपमेंट एंड द अचीवमेंट ऑफ एडिकुएट शेल्टर फॉर ऑल सो दैट पॉइंट इज वेरी क्लियर एंड सिंस द यू एन हैबिटाट केम इन टू बींग इन इंडिया हैज़ बीन बेसिकली इलेक्टेड to lead this important organization the third time and india will also be represented by the here in the union ministry of housing and urban poverty elevation so try to remember this this looks very very important to me uh, question number 10 consider the following statements about the commando battalion for resolute action or cobra so cobra is a specialized unit of the indian central reserve police force that is correct cobra is proficient in guerrilla tactics and jungle warfare so this is also correct cobra is used exclusively to counter the naxalite problem this is absolutely wrong any insurgent group so answer here is a one and two so originally established to counter the naxalite problem and uh, cobra is deployed within india to address any insurgent group engaging in asymmetrical warfare so thank you hey guys what's up so let us discuss the mcqs of today is the last day of the month 30th november 2017 from tomorrow onwards december will start and exactly 6 months later you will have your prelims so it is my humble request that please focus very very hard otherwise sir and ma'am chances of selection are very bleak and you will be very meek so try to be very brave and bold so that you bold you pass in the first attempt itself or whatever attempt you are about to give consider the following statements the ministerial conference is the wto's highest decision making body yes that is correct in 2017 the wto's ministerial conference will take place in bali indonesia uh, that is wrong it will not be in bali indonesia not everything happens in bali indonesia it will be in buenos aires uh, it is the capital of argentina argentina is a south american country from where lionel messi is the footballer anyway answer is a one only so in 2017 the wto's ministerial conference will take place in buenos aires which is in argentina the capital of argentina uh, question number 2 bhashan char island was recently in news because of it was because of rohingya muslims rehabilitation plan so answer here is b so bangladesh says what do you do know about rohingya muslims so if you do not know then i made a video on that so please watch that before uh, you go through this So Rohingya Muslims are basically they stay in the Rakhine state of Myanmar and they are considered stateless by Myanmar and they are feeling feeling lot of persecutions from the Myanmar citizens and that is why they are escaping to India and Bangladesh. So Bangladesh approved a controversial 280 million dollar project to transform uh, Bhashan Char Island which is a desolate island off its southern coast into a temporary camp for 100,000 Rohingya refugees despite lot of warnings that the site is uninhabitable. But obviously, Bangladeshi citizens do not want them, so there is a lot of political pressure to ship them to the island. Question number three: Consider the following statements. Majority of the members of the United Nations officially recognize Palestine as an independent state. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Palestine is basically, uh, you know, about Israel-Palestine conflict. So Israel does not recognize it, or it, it do not recognize one part of it, recognize the other part. So it recognizes West Bank. and not the gaza strip so india supports two state solution for the palestine israel dispute yes india does support the two state solution but india is also very very close to israel so just to speak so answer here is c both one and two so the majority of the members of the united nations that is majority of the countries of the world will officially recognize palestine as an independent state and india also supports the two state solution for the palestine israel uh, dispute Question number four. Recently, Ministry of Home Affairs of India has signed a comprehensive agreement on cooperation on security with the Ministry of Interior of which of the following countries? So here we have signed an agreement with Russia. So answer here is a Russia. So recently, the Ministry of Home Affairs of India has signed a comprehensive agreement on cooperation on security with the Ministry of Interior of 
Russia. So please remember this point. Uh, question number five. Uh, this year, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit (GES) was co-hosted by the Chinese and Indian government. Uh, that statement is wrong. It is just by Indian government and USA, not China. Global Entrepreneurship Summit held for the first time in South Asia. Yes, this is absolutely correct. In the Global Entrepreneurship Summit of 2017, more than 50% of the delegates were women. Yes, this is also correct. So answer here is B23. So it will give a lot of boost to the women entrepreneurs of the and across the world. And Ivanka Trump, to the daughter of President of the United States Donald Trump, she visited India. And uh, the answer here is B. That is 23. So this year's the Global Entrepreneurship Summit it was co-hosted by the U.S. and Indian governments. And Global Entrepreneurship Summit was held for the first time in South Asia, and it was held at Hyderabad in Telangana. Question number six: The theme of the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017 was. So the theme here was since more than 50% entrepreneurs are women, so you can realize that they wanted to give a book big boost to women empowerment through women entrepreneurship. The so women comes into enterprises business, so they will obviously it will be better for any country. So here answer is women first prosperity for all because as it said that if women do entrepreneurship, it usually lead to prosperity for the entire family so to speak so the theme of the global entrepreneurship summit ges 2017 which was held in telangana hyderabad was women first prosperity for all question number seven uh, which of the following are correctly matched facebook has free basics atl has zero platform so yes the answer is absolutely correct they are basically one and the same thing and they are against uh, the uh, net neutrality both of them and try which is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India have categorically stated that your net has to be neutral, internet cannot be partial. So both of these are not allowed in India. Just to tell you, answer here is C, both one and two. So Facebook's free basics, Airtel's zero platform, they are initiatives to provide free internet access to a very limited number of sites. So answer here is C, that is both one and two. Uh, question number eight which among the following Indian cities has been recognized by the United Nations Environment Program as global success story in the solving the problem of solid state it's not Surat it's not Hyderabad it's not Amritsar now those people who are not from Kerala usually pronounced it especially the North Indian pronounced it Allah Puja but uh, I have a lot of Malayali friends so they call it Alepi so I hope I am pronouncing it right so Alepi has been recognized by the United Nations Environment Program UNEP as a global success stories in solving the problem of solid state along with four, four other cities from across the world Osaka is in Japan and you have I don't know how to pronounce it but Jubiljana, Penang and Kaika so these are the cities LAP address the problem uh, by the way it is beautiful it has huge better backwaters by introducing a decentralized waste management system and this separates out the biodegradable waste at the water level and treats it in small composting plants and provide many of its 174,000 residents with biogas for cooking purposes. Question number 9, which of the following countries are correctly matched? So answer here is uh, Osaka is in Japan, I have already told you. So Jublana is in Slovenia, this is correct. Penang is in Malaysia, this is also correct. And Kaika is in Colombia, it will not be pronounced as Kajika, I hope it should be Kahika. So answer here is D. All of the above are correctly matched, absolutely correctly matched. So LAP is a town in Kerala. It is very close to Cochin. And it is among five places in the world that have been recognized by the United Nations Environment Program as success stories in fighting the problem of solid waste. And besides LAP, the other cities on the list include Osaka in Japan, uh, okay, Ljubljana in Slovenia, Penang in Malaysia and Kaika in Colombia. Question number 10, which among the following is the theme of the 2007 United Environment Assembly, United Nations Environment Assembly, which will be held in Nairobi, Kenya. So basically this assembly, which is being held in Nairobi, Kenya, which is a country very close to the Horn of Africa. So answer here is pollution. So United Nations Environment Assembly, uh, it will be held in Nairobi, Kenya. And the theme of the 2017 UN Environment Assembly, it will be pollution. So thank you for watching this lesson. And I hope you enjoyed the November MCQs and do subscribe to the December MCQs as well.